Well, thanks everyone for uh, for joining us today. We are uh, super excited about the next couple days. Um, there has uh, literally been years of work, um, a ton of energy poured into um, our company and our product. And in the next two days, we're going to make some of the biggest announcements about our technology that we've ever made in our history. So um, obviously, the format has changed, uh, the way that we reach out to you. Um, but we are just super, super excited to 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 have you here. So on behalf of myself, my team, um, who is really passionate, really excited about this, welcome. Let's get started. We're going to go fast. We're going to cover lots of material. You can know that everything is going to be recorded, so you can come back for this material later. Um, but there's going to be a lot coming at you and uh, um, some things that we think you're going to find very, very exciting. So let me share my screen and let's get rocking. OK. So the first thing I guess I would say is, um, wow, uh, the kind of interest that we've seen um, in this conference has been stunning. Uh, we've been, as many of you know, some of you have been with us all three years. We started our conference series in uh, 2018 at the Microsoft office in Calgary. We repeated that in 2019. We went from 38 people to 60 people. We were thrilled with kind of more and more people coming. We had people traveling from all over the, you know, North America to come to that conference, and we were excited. Obviously, now that we're virtual, we can reach out to even a broader audience. And with a customer base that is truly global, um, we can reach out to people and bring all this content. So we've got sessions from our customers um, that are here locally. We got sessions um, on the last day. We're ending with one of our customers out of New Zealand. So you're going to find lots and lots of good content over the course of these two days and pick and choose what you like. So anyway, wait from a from a you know registration standpoint, um, we're way up. Uh, it's kind of blown our expectations. I didn't even update this chart this morning. I don't know where we are. In terms of content, we've got 22 sessions that we're delivering. So that's about three times the amount of content that we've had in the past. Lots of it, you'll see that we talk about technical content that goes really deep. Those are like our T300 track. And then we'll have our general track of 100 where it's more HSC content or uh, you know round tables where we go into different things. So you can look across that agenda to find what, what suits you and what is best uh, um, and then certainly come back for recordings. We've got more product announcements than we've had before. You're going to find out a lot of exciting things. Some of them you've kind of we've leaked a little bit, so you probably have some sense of what's coming. Um, and then you know what was super uh, exciting as well is just the amount of companies that we don't know who are tuning in for this. Um, obviously, our customers who are passionate about this technology have been, been big supporters and really driving the adoption of, of iTrack 365. But there's a lot of people who are are looking in and and watching what's happening, and that to me is a very exciting thing. And it's 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 across many countries even that uh, um, through some of our Microsoft uh, relationships that we reach some of these people. Um, so what we're going to do today? Let me see. Get my clickers working here. Is we're going to talk um, first about in the keynote about some industry challenges. Um, there's no question there's some dramatic things happening in the world right now. And we want to put into context how we look at that and what we've been seeing because we've really been keeping close to you know trends. Um, but every family and every household and every continent has been affected by this pandemic. Um, and as a health and safety um, community, I think there's a responsibility we have to play in helping out. And we're going to talk a little bit about that challenge. And then we're going to move into how do we think we're addressing that challenge? What's some of the approaches that we take that are unique? And then you're going to hear from some of our customers. We're going to go live to the camera and we're going to have some interactive um, Q&A so people can talk a little bit about how they're using it. Because iTrack is used in many, many different ways. So when you, when you think about what's going on right now, um, the industry disruption is is like nothing we've ever seen, and I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. Um, we've seen it in travel, 90% uh, reduction in airline flights. You see retail turned on its head. You see our governments are literally printing money. They are trying to keep this entire system and economy moving forward and keeping people uh, not only healthy, but the ec economy healthy. 
and it's causing all sorts of changes. It's causing um, now we're seeing people say they want to work at home, okay, and, and companies are declaring they're going to work at home only. Um, you know, interesting. Well, that that's going to impact people. That's going to impact businesses. But one of the one of the ones that, as I was doing research for this presentation and and constantly tracking, you know, what we look at in industry, one of the ones that really shocked me was when I heard this this report by Anderson Cooper. Um, you know, talking with Professor Galloway about higher education. And this is a very recent piece. And he talked about demand destruction. He talked about things that were changing in the market. And he actually talked about it in a way that was stunning. It, it took, it literally took my breath away. And he talked about the fact that students getting higher education sometimes have, you know, six figures of debt to get their education. It's very expensive. It's a very um, as he calls it, high gross margin industry. Um, and a high gross margin industry that's ripe for change, ripe for automation, ripe for new ways of doing things. And he asked a simple question, or he made a simple point about how many parents are going to want to spend $100,000 on their kids' education to watch them sit in their basement taking Zoom meetings. And he says that 20 to 30% of students this fall, 20 to 30%, may not go back, may take a get gap year. You think about the industries, we already know it's hit travel, we already know it's hit retail, we already know it's hit our governments and our tech companies are responding, but here's another industry that's just on the verge of feeling the kind of, you know, change that is coming from it. And, you know, I know I'm an optimist. I know these companies, I know these organizations can adapt to these things. You know, from every, everything to how you take an elevator into your high rise is gonna change. You have to queue up because you can only have two or three people, maybe four in an elevator. You know, transportation has changed. The sporting industry has changed. So this disruption is going to continue. We know things will go back to, to some reality sometime soon or sometime in the future. We don't know when that is. So we've got to think carefully about our own industry, our own businesses, and how we're responding to that challenge. So when we, we think about um, the HSE industry challenge and, you know, inside of crises, there's an opportunity for leadership. There's an opportunity for us to showcase, you know, the things that we've learned as HSE professionals and with technology that we've put in place and what that could mean for organizations. So, you know, the role of HSE is changing. In the past, and people who've heard me speak at conferences or wherever I've been, you know, they've, they've, they, I always talked about hard hats and steel toe boots. And, you know, as I talk about things like hard hats and steel toe boots, I did that because, you know, it was really commentary about who we serve the most. It was the people in the field. But that audience has changed. With COVID, that audience has changed where the risks are now for the professionals um, in the offices, in locations. And sometimes even some of the people in the remote places are actually at less risk. So our community of people who need to understand safety and understand and need these processes with this current pandemic um, has grown a thousand times. It's gone, people who never needed to think about this are now thinking about it. So we used to focus on, um, we used to focus on, you know, hazard, hazardous, you know, where we could see hazards that were visible, you know, a big saw, a logging truck, a big piece of equipment. Those hazards were were, were, were were very visible and we learned from those. We put processes in place and we many of us have spent our careers. I'm relatively new to the space, five, six years, but many of you have spent your careers doing this. Um, when, when it then comes to the new reality, we're starting to see hazards that are no longer visible. They're no longer visible and nor are the consequences. The consequences, and you just have to look at your own kids and your own family members to understand that. So I'm not telling anybody here on the call anything you don't already know, but this is something that the safety industry has thought about. This is things that we've worked with. So it's our time to lead. It's our time to showcase what kinds of, of innovations in process and in technology and leadership that we can bring to the community to help through these current challenges. One of the things, and this slide's a bit of an eye chart, pardon me for that, but I'll, I'll kind of point out a couple of things. Don't try and read all the fine print, but what this is showing is it's actually showing what I call the HSE's new customers, the people that we need to service um, across, 
you know, the entire, um, you know, industry landscape. And in that industry landscape, you're going to see, you know, you're going to see people in on the green side here that are healthcare related. And on the blue side, you see non healthcare related. But if you notice what this is talking about, it's talking about occupational risk. Many of these industries have never thought about occupational risk. They never had to. Now, healthcare, certainly they had a certain degree of it and it's increased. And, and we're so thankful for those people and what they're doing for us every single day. But there's groups like, you know, tellers, office clerks, um, you know, we've got retail salesperson, cashiers. These are people that have never had to think about really safety in the way and now they're on the front lines. So this is a very fundamental shift in who our audience is and we need to think about how we service them and how we support them on a whole. So this shift in risk is, is you know, think of it as a teeter-totter, right? Pre-COVID, you know, it was always field staff and remote people. They were by themselves. We were worried about them. They were out in the field doing something. We were worried about them. Well, now in a post-COVID world, you're in a situation where, you know, healthcare, retail, you know, office workers are actually on the front lines. So this shift in risk is something we got to think carefully about. And obviously many of our organizations, many of our industries are already very rapidly putting process in place, responding, and we're going to continue to need to do that. Other things that are happening is uh, how we work has changed. And, you know, you guys have all seen it. I, I didn't know what House Party was two week, two months ago. Um, house Party, I'm on it every weekend with my family now. Um, we look at daily usage of Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams, which certainly we'll talk a lot about today. Um, but Teams has absolutely skyrocketed as people look for a secure way of connecting and running their businesses. And organizations that I know that were dabbling and had 50 people playing around with this in IT deployed three or 4,000 um, you know, people on Teams in the matter of four or five days. Um, these kinds of things are fundamentally shifting. And in our organization, I'll tell you, out of our San Francisco office, we've actually made the declaration that we're not going to go back into our offices till January 1st. That kind of causes the, the hair on the back of my neck to stand up. I love my colleagues. I love our organization. I love being close to people and interacting, but daily work has changed and we have to adapt to some of those things, whether it's with teams, whether it's with these other kinds of tools, um, it's all around us. So we've seen, um, we've seen accelerated change. You know, Satya, uh, uh, Nadella, I, I read everything he writes. He's a brilliant man. I, I follow him closely. And when he said this, I thought that it was is really poignant. You know, two years of digital transformation in two months. Things are moving very quickly. And again, um, as an HSE industry, I think uh, we need to be at the forefront of that. Mental health. The mental health is one aspect of this that that is scary. It's, it's concerning and we're all watching our family members and we're looking at this and going, what does it mean? We don't know what it means, but I think we need to work with people in our communities and give them tools, technology, support, coaching, be there available and empathetic, all of those things. And I'm not a professional mental health person by any means, but I know that as a community, um, that is part of our, our safety. Our mental health is part of our safety. And you're seeing the stats are starting to show that people are struggling and we need to find ways of supporting them. So as I kind of bring this together in terms of some of these major themes of, of kind of where we see the industry challenge, we also start to look at it and say, well, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? We've got, you know, technology, we've got process, we've got expertise, we've got, you know, um, certifications. We know that we're specialists in this. Age. What do we need to do? And I, I, I thought of it in really three different ways. I thought of it as flexibility and speed. We need to we need to be flexible and we need to move fast. Things are changing hour by hour, day by day. We need to have ways of responding so that we can, you know, tomorrow could be a brand new challenge that we hadn't even considered. And we got to have the, t the tools, the technology, the people, the process all around us so that we can respond to that kind of thing very, very quickly. We also need to scale it. 
we need to be able to reach out to large audiences. In many cases, we might be two or three people in, in safety supporting a company of, of in, in one case, I've got one customer who's got two or three in safety and they got 10,000 people in the company and others that it might be different ratios, but still you need to be able to get, you know, out to that audience with these messages of support um, and, t- and, 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 and care and process that helps them operate and gives them back some semblance of control. So scale is another big part of this, is you need to be able to get things out on a mass level very quickly. And then thirdly, community. We think community is a really critical part of this. Um, we've made a number of announcements in the last um, you know, two, three, uh, well, t- probably two months, um, but we've done that over the last couple of years in terms of how do we support best practices? Company A over, a over here learned something and did something really cool with an iTrack form. Someone else did something very cool over here. We want to bring those communities, and this conference is a flashpoint for that. That's why we get so excited when we see you all here to be here for this kind of conversation, um, to engage as part of that community and learn from each other. So to me, I think that this time is truly a rally cry. There, there's a HSE rally cry happening that says, it's time for us as both technology and HSE people to show process innovation and leadership. If we're sitting in our office and all this craziness is happening around us with COVID and we're not part of it, we're missing some. We should be on the front lines of that, providing all the expertise and all the knowledge that we've had for years and bringing that to bear on the company as it struggles. So there's a, there's a big responsibility here. And to me, I don't think HSE has been in the minds of more people on this planet in the case, in the in, in the history of the world. Literally, it sounds crazy, but 7 billion people are thinking about their safety uh, in a very different way than they did only three, four months ago. So we're really bringing together, I guess, safety and technology is what always has been there. That's what's been the formation when we acquired this company, you know, I guess about six years ago now. We saw that safety and technology was going to grow, and we saw that opportunity. Now we layer into it a crisis that nobody expected and and change that's happening and and mass disruption. And we start to say, look, this is a time where we need to bring some of these things to bear for the organizations that we represent. That's what drives our team. That's what drives my team and our our technology roadmap. That's what we're going to talk about about how we try and service that and and, and make it a viable and, and important part of, of how we support you to do it for your customers inside of your organizations. So um, in terms of the next things, I just wanted to um, see, let me just see here. We have a special guest who I'm hoping can join us. Um, hey, Trevor. Hey, Trevor. Yep. Uh, uh, she doesn't appear to be on yet. Okay. Uh, did, so I did message her, but she hasn't replied. Okay. Well, we'll come back to that. Okay. Sounds good. So the next part of the, the conversation, I guess we would like to get into, um, is, you know, talking about the approach that we have to the market and what we've been doing, um, with our technology and our tools. Um, So the iTrack platform, many of you guys have seen this, you've seen it in our proposals, you've seen it in our slide presentations, you've seen it uh, all all over. We call this affectionately our rainbow chart. And it talks about, you know, the major pieces where most people think about safety maybe as just incident management. We think about it on the right side about tracking and training. And then on the left, we think about some of the proactive measures that we have around safety um, and what those, those things can do. So those are, these are not new. What is new is we are building on this vision. This vision was originally published probably about three years ago, maybe four even. And what we've been doing is using this framework of our full commercial off the shelf safety system and been adding and building on it all the way along. At the base of it, we got Dynamics 365 or the Power Platform. Um, that is a key part of everything that that I track 365 is. That's the foundation. We have chosen a different route than almost anybody else in the market in terms of how to build their system. HSE is not an island. It is not something that can be done on its own. It's got to be built into the systems and processes of the large organization. And we are big believers in that. 
So, pardon me for one second. So we are big believers in what this platform represents to us. So that is growing. And with Microsoft support, that has been um, adding more features and functionality than we could ever dreamed of, um, even you know a few years ago when we started. But there's other things on this slide that you'll see. You'll see um, back to the idea of community. You've got 200 industry templates. So you don't have to invent this stuff yourself. You can come to us and our consultants will help you with templates that have been built by other companies. And you, we've, we get permission for that. We ask if we can share that. But the safety community is like none other in terms of how they share. And that has been a fantastic piece of, of how we've continued to go to market. We've got tools and technologies, inclu including our new data transfer tool that has been totally rewritten um, that we are announcing this week. Um, that is there and available for you to get those templates and learn what others are doing. Um, you know, you've got major changes to reporting, guys. Sorry, I crossed it out. I didn't mean to cross it out. I meant to say we have put big effort into it. And the stuff we've done in our reporting suite, it's overdue. I know I got beat up by many of you for that. We took too long, but now we've got some of the things that we wanted to talk about. And then we've got things we're doing in the area of risk at the top um, that is really innovative. More to come. We are doing things uh, in procedures and, and you know, uh, um, we showed last year at a conference the augmented reality technology. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then we've got a new mobile app framework. So there is a tremendous amount of new technology and you guys can keep this slide and come back to it afterwards because this is just touching on a few things um, that, uh, that, are, uh, that are underway from our team and are being announced and and bringing to uh, uh, bringing to you. So many of you will know you can access our, our our application through web. You can access it through mobile, and you can access it through admin. Guess what? There's a little hint on the side. You guys know it's the worst kept secret of this conference. There's some stuff we're doing with Microsoft Teams, so we're going to talk about that momentarily. You saw last year, as I mentioned before, us take an eye track procedure, incorporate it into D365 Guides, a product from Microsoft, and incorporate it with HoloLens and Melek demonstrated what that looked like to run a training procedure on a chainsaw live at our event last year. We're not going to talk about that much today, but those are some of the underpinnings are still there in our platform and available to use and maybe especially relevant given some of the things that are happening in the market right now. One of the things that we're excited about is we have to keep to the real, you know, Paper is still part of our organizations. It's still part of what we have to do every single day. And, and that's frustrating for many of us. And I go, it drives me crazy when I see a clipboard out in the field. But when we see that kind of thing, we also recognize that there's different ways of actually approaching this problem. And one of the things that we did, and I'm going to show you a little demo here, um, where we talk about what actually um, works differently in terms of taking paper processes, artificial intelligence, a couple of products from Microsoft, um, Power Automate and RPA, and actually completing an iTrack form. So that you could take a uh, entire, you know, filing cabinet of documents, train it on how to see a, look, a couple of those documents with templates, and then upload a bunch of images and it would process them all directly into iTrack. So let me give you a, sh uh, a show and tell of that. So this is an example of, uh, of what uh, Tian is, is one of our, our, our team members that's joined us in the last year. And he showed how to take, use a product called Power Automate to import paper forms into iTrack using what's called RPA, Robotic Process Automation, which is basically building kind of a robot to act like a person to enter a form. So. Let's just give this a go. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to use a Power Automate flow to import paper forms to iTrack. For more details, including how this flow is created, see our full presentation. This process makes use of three powerful technologies from Microsoft. The first, Power Automate, formerly Microsoft Flow, lets you create automated workflows to implement business processes. The second, AI Builder, allows businesses to harness the power of AI without requiring specialized coding or data science skills. The third, 
robotic process automation helps you automate manual processes in desktop or web-based applications. First, I'm going to go to the flow which I have previously created. And once I edit the flow, it will show the steps and the actions which are part of the flow. The first um, part of this flow is the trigger, which initiates the flow. I've chosen a manual trigger for this demonstration, but there are a lot of automated triggers available as well. The second part of the flow is the prediction action, which uses AI to extract the data from the image of the form and convert it into text that can be passed into the next step. The third part of the flow uh, is running a UI flow for the web. What this does is automatically import the data using the Chrome web browser into an iTrack form. Now I'm going to do a quick test of this form, which will basically run the trigger. In this case, I'll be uploading a sample image. The image I will be uploading is shown right here. It's just a scan of a form with some messy writing to give the AI builder something to work on. I'm going to click on import, import the file, choose the type of the image and run the flow. Once the flow is running, you can go to the flow runs page, which lets you see a live view of your flow. And it also lets you see a lot of the details like the inputs and outputs of your different flow steps in case you need them in order to troubleshoot. Um, here we see um, it's just starting to hit the UI flow for the web. What is going to happen in a couple seconds is a window will open up and it will automate an instance of the Chrome web browser and all of the information that was recognized from that image of the form uh, by the AI will be inputted into this form. As you can see, it's entered the, da it's entered the date. It's um, selected both of the employees that were uh, both reporting the incident and involved in the incident entering the location and entering the details. Once the details have all been entered, the form is saved, the window is closed, and the flow completes. At this point, all the details from your paper-based form are now in iTrack. Thank you for watching this video. For more details on this flow and how it was set up, please see our full presentation. So let's go on. Um, so one of the other things, uh, so now you're taking paper, information you're getting into iTrack. Many of us, many of you know us for our mobile forms that we've had for, or our mobile application that we've had for years and years. Um, you know, but now we start to apply it even broader. Um, one of the things that I've been told many times by customers is that iTrack isn't just about safety. iTrack is actually about many other things. It gets into quality, it gets into environmental, it gets into sustainability, and as a platform, you know, here's just a list of different things that people are using this tool for. It's for many, many different things. If you have a clipboard and you want to get information into a process flow, iTrack is the way that you can do that. And that can go broadly across many parts of your organization. So the other part that's exciting is we got a community. We got a community of people who are actually sharing these. And that's, again, part of what this conference is about. So one of the things that happened when this entire COVID environment started to uh, this COVID crisis started to you know, present itself is like everybody, we all wanted to help. We all wanted to figure out what we could do to help. And we were anxious and worried and worried for our family members and our colleagues. And we wanted to say, well, what can we do? What can we do? And I am super, super proud of my team. My, my team came forward, uh, uh, specifically uh, Darren Houston, and said, you know what? We can do something. We've got technology. We can do something. We can do this fast. We can put some things in place. I'd like to invite Darren onto the call to talk a little bit about what he did to leverage, you know, the community, the best practices, and the technology that we have to answer the call for uh, COVID-19. So, Darren, would you want to jump on here? Thanks, Trevor. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, the whole COVID-19 thing, um, you know, while we were watching this uh, pandemic unfold, and, um, you know, the impact it was not only having obviously worldwide, but, you know, the impact was starting to have locally here um, within, you know, our, our home base and the impact it was also having um, to our customers and also, you know, small to medium businesses that, you know, didn't have technology. Um, you know, as a team, we got together and we said, hey, you know, we, we've got the technology, right? We have the expertise. Um, we can make something, right? We can, we can contribute to the help uh, to help against the fight of COVID-19. 
So really what happened is, you know, Thursday, April 2nd, um, you know, the iTrack 365 team got together and said, look, let's do something, right? We're, we're going to commit to this. Um, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can put together to help. Uh, we knew we needed to move fast, you know, because this COVID-19 thing was so fluid. Um, so a few of the members of the iTrack 365 team really started to burn the midnight oil, um, gave up our weekend. And um, on Tuesday, April 7th, we had um, an environment ready. Um, it had 15 process flows available um, for our customers on, on the call. You know, um, you, can, you can call those form types. Um, and then those were now available for our existing customers. Um, also then what happened was um, we had some um, co-sponsorship from Microsoft Canada. Um, so on May 14th, we were able to make a release um, about the, the iTrack 365 Community Edition for COVID-19 to the, the uh, larger market, uh, really targeting small businesses or small to medium businesses. So, you know, not only did we come up with 15 process flows uh, for COVID-19 for our customers, um, but then we we had this environment available, um, you know, free of charge for any organization um, that needed, you know, technology and processes to help with their, you know, their COVID-19 uh, fight. Um, I'd also like to uh, say, you know, special thanks to, you know, again, Trevor keeps uh, talking about, you know, community, right? Um, you know, we had um, um, our customers pitch in, test this thing. Um, you know, some customers um, gave us some advice on, you know, things we should be doing. And then specifically, you know, Stephen Andre, not sure if he's on the call, but, uh, you know, he also um, uh, helped with, with some of the forms, specifically the, uh, the pre-work assessment. Next slide, please. So, Darren, one sec. Uh, I'm not sure if you're... Sh okay, now it's fine. Sorry, it was... The slides are in sharing. Okay. Um, so what is this environment? So again, uh, 15 process flows or, or form types, um, really focusing around, you know, company compliance, um, you know, employee processes and essential and, and mobile workers, right? Um, so not only, uh, you know, compliance with the uh, um, company processes like uh, you know, business continuity plans, you know, uh, impact assessments, clean checklists, that kind of stuff, but also around, um, you know, health and wellness of, of people, you know, where are people working? Um, you know, are they doing okay? Um, you know, do you have any workforce that's uh, essential and coming to work, you know? So let's do some um, pre-assessments on those folks before they're able to show up, um, you know, and, and also looking at, you know, areas of risk um, with your employees in business and tracking that risk, doing corrective actions. Um, and really, it's about, all about, you know, best practices um, around, you know, HSC and, and COVID-19. So the other thing that we, we created was um, a Power BI pack, right? So, so anyone that uh, wants this or signs up for the community edition, um, you know, they, they get this Power BI pack. Um, has a ton of reporting in it. Here's just a sample of uh, one of the reports. So what you're looking at here is um, our um, uh, contact tracing um, Power BI. So we do have uh, uh, basically a, a daily um, interaction log so that, um, you know, anyone who's um, physically interacting with either other employees or third parties, right, they can track who they're interacting with so that, you know, if, if someone does um, fall ill with, uh, with COVID or test positive with COVID, um, you know, you're able to now go into your Power BI and, you know, search for that uh, employee and then um, trace, you know, uh, who they've all been in physical contact with within the, uh, the last two weeks. And here's just uh, just a list of the uh, process flows. I'm not going to go through this, um, but, uh, you know, you can you can see a ton of stuff which I talked about. Uh, things focused around company processes, uh, field worker processes, you know, essential workers, uh, mobile workers, all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you want to see more on, uh, you know, what our iTrack 365 uh, COVID-19 Community Edition looks like, um, I am demoing this at um, one o'clock this this afternoon. So uh, that's Mountain Time. So please please join, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll run you through these 
these process flows and the, the Power BI. And then we'll also give you information too, where you know, if you want to sign up for this, this environment, uh, you can do that. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Darren. And, and, you know, a special thanks to the team for putting this together. Um, I, I'm not sure if the slide showed at the beginning, but when we decided to do this, it started on April 2nd. Um, we deployed the technology to our customers and had 15 process flows ready on April 7th. And then we put out a public offering with Microsoft, you know, helping fund that to small business, you know, on May 14th. That's an amazing uh, journey and an amazing amount of technology to deliver in a short period of time. And uh, Darren really led the efforts. So kudos to Darren and all the work that he did and all the people that that supported him in making that happen. It's it's really, a, um, I think, something special. So there's there's more to talk about. There's cool things to talk about. And I um, one of the things that's underlying everything that we do um, at iTrack is security. Security is critical to everything that you do. You have to make sure that your software is solid. It's got, uh, you know, the right kind of authentication. It's working with modern protocols, including things like, you know, um, OAuth 2, things like that, multi-factor authentication. This kind of goes behind. This is kind of the unsung hero of, of iTrack. We have literally been working for, you know, for, for a very long time to get this all working really transparently. And I am thrilled to say that we now um, have all the technology to use this modern pr pr you know, a protocol. We've tested it, it's ready in the new versions of iTrack and you can deploy it, you're gonna see it in action today. The cool part about seeing it in action is you actually see nothing. <laughs> you move from iTrack or you move into Teams or you move back and forth, you just don't get asked for your username and password because it knows with confidence who you are and what the security privileges you have. This is a really big deal. A shout out to Melik and his team, TN, for all the work you guys did here. Fantastic, uh, you know, fantastic um, accomplishment and something we're very proud of. Now, the big one, the big one that we are super excited about is Today, right now, is the official announcement of iTrack 365 in Microsoft Teams. Um, we have worked and got support from Microsoft in some amazing ways. And if you look on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see our iTrack portal. You'll see what you, you know. And we've sometimes kind of been beat up saying the interface isn't the cleanest. We've always focused on, on making it very simple. Here it is inside of Teams, and you can see all of your functions, training documents. So training your team function is is now goes from there up to there, right? So now we have um, taken iTrack so that people who live inside of Teams can continue and operate completely within that environment. We're about to show you what that looks like. So that's about, I talked at the beginning about extending our reach and scaling, scaling to people and organizations. And we've seen the companies and some of the case studies you'll see in the next couple of days where companies have got really serious about using iTrack and really serious about how it can support their organization. And it went to, you know, uh, many hundreds and thousands of people over time. Um, Microsoft Teams is going to take that to a whole new level. And for that, we are super, super excited. How many times have I said the word excited? The old world. You had a browser, you had Dynamics, you had Power BI, you had Teams, and you had email and Outlook. In the new world, you can do all of that from Teams. You can do your approvals from Teams. You can do you know, your Power BI from Teams. You can do all of that. And again, that's where I'm gonna hand it to Darren. Now, one of the things that people do all day, every day with iTrack is approvals. We're a workflow engine. We're built around safety processes. Having checkpoints is a natural part of that uh, technology. and one of the things is you always have to log into the portal to go approve things. Well, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Well, no longer. You can now approve things in Teams. You can approve things on your mobile device. You can approve things in email. So we're making use again of this rich environment of Microsoft tools and technologies that that can that can really take us um, to a whole different group of audience and, and scale into those organizations. So with that, I'm gonna hand it to Melek. Um, enough slides, let's show you some of this stuff in action. 
and uh, get Melik. Uh, he's going to give you a tour of it now. You can come back for more of a tour at 145 later today and um, go really deep into this. So Melik's going to show you how Teams works with channels, how it works with approvals, um, something they call Teams cards. We sometimes call them hero cards too. There's different names for them. And then one of the things that's behind the scenes is single sign-on. That intense amount of work to do that modern authentication is all underlying this to make this really transparent and secure. So that you don't see anything, but I want to make sure that you guys, um, everybody understands the amount of work and technology that goes behind making something like that happen. And then we'll talk a little bit about the training app. So over to you, Malik. Hi, everyone. Just going to start sharing my desktop. So our Teams integration really started with a three-day hack fest that we did between um, a group of developers from, from MyTrack and a group of developers from Microsoft. And from that, from that point, we took it a little bit further. Um, so I'm just going to go a little bit high level. There'll be more detail later in the later session at, I think, 145. Um, so from within Teams, you can now have your employees be completely in Teams. So for like the managers, they could have their reporting in Teams. They could see their iTrack forms in Teams. And if they click on one of their, their forms, it'll automatically open up an iTrack portal. So it'll be the same UI that they know today. So the learning curve shouldn't be as steep. Uh, and from here, you can do anything you want to the form. Um, so also in here, you have your employees. So right now, today, managers might not be able to update employees because you don't want to teach them iTrack and you want to teach them dynamics. But with Teams, you can kind of you can pick and choose. So in this case, these are the forms from MyTrack. These are the list of employees from Dynamics, um, facilities, meeting agendas, accounts. And the manager supervisors might need these are device pins. So that's all kind of in one place rather than jumping around between Dynamics, iTrack, and um, other places. And for the process flows, you can have them in different channels. So you can set up each channel or set up a team based on roles rather than having users jump around. Um, so you can also have your competency and training, like your training tasks, um, the training procedures. And then for the administrators, you can have them actually author the form types from within Teams. So the administrators need to author our form types, can have a whole entire list in here, and they can actually open it from in here and make all their changes without having to learn two different systems or without having to jump around too much. They can also have the forms and form business units, and they can actually edit their teams from in here, their um, dynamics teams, security teams. I'll just let that one load a little bit. Um, so also when you're in here too, a little bandwidth. So for the competency training, rather than give them a whole list of teams that they need to edit, the managers or the administrators for accomplishing training really only need to edit the one team. So you could just surface that one team for them. Let's just give this thing a little bit of time to load. So from in here, you could surface views. You can also show entire entities in here. So from in here, I could remove a team member or add a team member without having to go through the list of teams and figure out which one I want to edit. Um, so you can make make their day-to-day -day tasks a lot easier because you just have links, direct links to exactly what they need day by day. Um, you can also send approvals to them rather than send them to the emails. So in here, um, I think I have one in here. Oh, no. 
So rather than sending them an email with a link and forcing them to open up the iTrack portal, reviewing the form from there and then clicking approve, they get approval in Teams, directly in Teams. And from here, they can approve or reject it. If they approve it or reject it, they can enter in comments and then submit it and approval is done. And then behind the scenes, you can have workflow and flow doing other things like moving the form back and forth between statuses, whether or not they approved or rejected it. Um, also from within here, you can have um, message, uh, notifications coming to teams of forms being submitted or forms being moved. Um, you can also send um, team cards automatically when the, when the form is submitted or created. And from here, the person can get some information, which is completely customizable. And they can actually view the incident from in here. So they have to hunt and dig for this, uh, for the for the form. And if people are chatting about something, can actually, we have a Teams app that we actually built, uh, started uh, during our hackathon. So you actually search for your form. Um, and send some details about the form to other users within Teams. And from here, you can have it open the portal or open this form directly into, directly from iTrack. So it just saves having the user have to jump around from system to system, go into their inbox to check for approvals or check for notifications, go into the portal to approve them, go into Dynamics to update records, and so on. Um, so again, there'll be a deeper dive later. So I'm just going to go on to our mobile app. So what's new also is our new training app. Um, the training app will make training easier, reduce paper burden, make certification faster and more compliant, and open training up to more people. So these are some screenshots, and there'll be a session on the training app later with more details. Awesome. awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Melek. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, some of the things behind the scenes, as I said before, are a really important part of that. You've got things like, uh, uh, you know, the, the authentication that just happens. Um, that is a, uh, again, a pretty monumental task that people have uh, undertaken to make that happen. But it really, what we're going for is that if you are deploying teams, if that's part of your solution and part of the response to your workers moving um, and, and operating in a different environment um, today, it's iTrack and all the process work that you do with iTrack can just be a natural extension of that. In fact, they might not even know that it's not teams. It could be just part of it. And uh, that would make us even happier. A key part of this mobile piece that um, we've had one mobile app and kind of how I think of our mobile app is it's, it's a collection of probably about 50 different processes. So it's a very complex, uh, but simple to use, but complex tool with many capabilities from, Hey, I want to view my safety manual to, you know, I need to submit a form to, I need to look up a procedure to, you know, um, uh, doing an event or managing an event. There's many different things. But what's been maybe not said um, that we want to make more explicit to people is with the launch of our new training app and what we're doing with the training app to, um, you know, reduce the paper burden, get your certificates online. That's all cool, but that's step one. That is step one. And the team, again, has been working really hard to build out this function and capability to show you what a new app can look like from a user interface. But there's something behind the scenes that I actually want to point out that's really important. And what that is, is we are actually also announcing that we are publishing a health and safety uh, API. And for some of you, you may not know the words API, but that's essentially application programming interface. It's a way, it's a certain set of services that you publish with security and all the things that you'd expect to have around it. So it's secure that allows you to use, add safety to your other applications. 
So right now, this training app that that Malik just talked about, that training app is, you know, our existing app, our, our mobile apps, they all use this piece of code that talks to um, a service, a bunch of Azure services, and then a bunch of pieces behind the scenes of business logic that make iTrack function the way a full commercial off-the-shelf safety system should work. But now what we're doing is we're actually publishing that API so that if you have another app or you have another system in your business where it might grab some information and need to add it to an incident or another, you build a, another power app that's being used for something else in your organization, you can incorporate that into the core data model of iTrack and know that the business logic and all the things that you need to do in terms of following process for health and safety and compliance is being followed. So this is just version one. We're just talking about this for the very first time. This has been behind the scenes of our mobile. And as we add more mobile apps, as we see customers use this in different ways, we're going to move this forward. But this essentially allows you to plug safety into any other system that you have in your business and know that you're getting you know, the process compliance and workflows that you need, but also from different places. So this is, this is a, 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 again, another big deal for us. Um, we'll be anxious. I know this is quite technical. Talks about JSON sending data back and forth, but programmers love this kind of stuff. And this is a very fundamental approach that allows us to get our application into more places. So the next thing, um, so again, another big piece. The other thing is, um, <laughs> Not a small piece, but I, we feel it's time to move on from some of our heritage. Um, for a long time, we've been known as a company of Neo Systems, and you know, for many of you, that meant many different things. That might have meant um, um, our team. That might have meant uh, our, our 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 Nav business that we had that we sold off a year and a half ago to uh, you know other product lines that we actually had. And when we acquired this business, we were always really clear. We acquired it for iTrack 365 or what was to become iTrack 365. So when we acquired it, we had a couple of customers who were using this and exploring it. Now we have many customers using it and that's been great. We've, we've, uh, I think it's like, well, it's probably, I think it's 15 times more customer. Like it's grown a lot. Um, but now it's time to say goodbye to the new systems name. So we are going to rename ourselves really in line with our product. We talk about our team being the iTrack team and the product being iTrack 365. So what we're actually going to do to just help us, you guys, we need your help from the audience. There's lots of people here. Um, we need your help um, coaching us through the next couple of days to stop using the name Neo. So we came up with a bit of a game. Um, if you hear us say the word Neo or Neo Systems, and these two count, um, if I say Neo Systems, Neo Systems, Neo Systems, those count too and for obvious reasons. So please keep a tabulated number um, during during our sessions for all of our, our people and let us know what that is. And then we're gonna make a donation to the food bank at the end of this um, to help with COVID-19 efforts. So uh, just a fun way of kind of engaging and then obviously supporting a really important initiative that uh, is helping some of the less fortunate in our community and get them the kind of uh, uh, help that they might need in, in during a time of crisis. So now what I'd like to do, um, we've talked about industry challenges. We've talked about the role and the rally cry that um, is there for us as an HSE community to respond to. We've talked about technology that we've delivered, including, you know, iTrack 365 for Teams. We've talked about um, our API. We've talked about our new training app. We talked about our COVID suite. Um, so we've got some of the technology behind it. Now I wanted to spend the next few minutes, you know, talking about some of the, with some of our customers to understand some ideas of how they use iTrack. Because iTrack, one of the things that's great about it is it's a platform. And it's a platform that can be used in many different ways, um, many different, uh, uh, you know, approaches, and you can be really creative with it. So. When we look at that, we get really excited when people talk about it and share and uh, and and give a sense of what what those kind of opportunities are. Who is? Okay, so let's just. Um, I'm just going to do a couple logistical things here to get us set up for this part of the conversation. Okay, so. Um, 
on our round table today, um, we've got uh, um, six people who are going to join us. Holly, um, unfortunately, had to say last night that she couldn't join us. Um, she is uh, with an organization called BC Forest Safe. Uh, they're doing some really interesting things in the forestry industry. As many of you know, our company started really in, in the energy industry. We moved into forestry. We're doing a ton, and, and mining seems to be really an area of energy. We even work with with nonprofits and waste management companies and and airports you know like we've got a whole variety but what holly's um did and i'll just speak to that briefly because she couldn't join us today was their organization could uh, is using eye track in a different way that it extends to as an association they need compliance to be followed for 2300 member companies um, in the industry. So think of these as forestry companies, 2,300 forestry companies within BC all have to follow certain rules and regulations as part of their association. And they use iTrack through data collection that comes from their website and things like that. And then the iTrack process flows to really manage all of that. So it's, it's a, been a really exciting initiative. They're, they're just going live, uh, um, you know, right away here with the solution. It's been a lot of work kind of getting it to where it is, but uh, again, really excited. And some people may even go, geez, I never thought of iTrack in that capacity. And that's that's totally cool. So um, now a, a few others that uh, I'd like to uh, point out here. So I'm just going to go around. So for people on the round table, if you can just be ready to turn on your video camera and turn on your mic when I uh, reference you, but we wanted to hear some stories and stories are the best part of any presentation you get sick of slides um probably uh, you loved malik's demo and darren stuff and and we showed you some things but let's now talk about how people are using eye track and what their journey's been like because implementing technology isn't always easy and it's not always straightforward and we're okay as a community to talk about what worked and what didn't work because sometimes people are going to struggle sometimes our tool doesn't stand up to the tests that it needs to but we're here and committed to making it work in every way possible. So we thought that journey would be something that would be really fun to share. So the first person I'd like to turn to is uh, uh, Stephen Andre from Secure. Um, you heard Stephen's name before. He helped us with our COVID suite. Um, Stephen, you know, you've had a long journey with, uh, with iTrack. You have a longer journey than most. Why don't you tell us a little bit about when you started using the tool and uh, and uh, and then we can talk a little bit about how, to, how it applies at Secure Energy. Great, thanks Trevor. Thanks, Trevor. I, appreciate I appreciate you guys, you having, guys having me on, me on. And, and I'll try, I'll not, try to not to say the word, the word too, too often, often, but my journey, my journey with iTrack started, started back, back in, in 2009, 2009 and I actually worked actually at worked. Neo Systems. Hey Steve, um, one sec, you had an echo. Okay, that's good now. Thanks Tom. Every, is that okay now? You betcha. Okay, so I worked with the, a lot of the crew that you see here, and, um, and I thought it was an amazing program. Uh, I left the company and worked my way over to Secure Energy Services in 2012. And at that point, when I started there, we weren't using anybody. Uh, we were tracking things using Excel and emails and, and PDFs. So yep. we started using um, iTrack in the company as of 2013, 2014, I believe we went live. Um, we've integrated it into all three divisions and all three divisions are now using iTrack 365. So it's been an incredible uh, learning curve, not only integrating the older platform into all three divisions, but then essentially uh, reintegrating the new, the new components. So one of the things that we've really enjoyed with that. Stephen, maybe tell us a little bit about, you know, the process and, uh, you know, the process we call them process flows. We used to call them form types. Um, we've been lots of good debates about what to call things like that. But essentially, you know, where, you know, iTrack got tactical for you in terms of things that you use it for to, to run parts of the business and maybe give us a sense of the numbers. Like how many of these things do you do in a, in a week or in a month or in a year? Um, you know, and, and, and how do you look at those numbers? Sure. Um, we, we call them forms. Um, I, I recognize that iTrack 365 uses the term process flows. So we, we ask our field end users to enter in any number of 10 proactive entries on their day to day. Um, as well as we, we, 
we ask them to put in any reactive type or, or incident um, process flow that they, they experience on a day to day basis. Um, these these proactive entries include everything from a field level hazard assessment to behavioral observation to uh, hazard ID inspections. Uh, you name it. So we we measure all of those types of things, and and we've in in the division that I work in, Secure's got three divisions, and I I'm right now in the the drilling and production services division, and we've seen growth since 2016 from roughly just below 6,000 entries a year, um, up to our I think our peak was about 18,000 entries a year, and last year I believe with um, activity levels in the drilling and production industry we topped out at just shy of 14,000. So our division has about 330 people, uh, probably before April of this year. And you'd be looking at about 275, maybe, if not 250, that would be field facing. So those would be the people that would be completing these on a daily basis. And um, for example, in our, um, we have one of our offices where our our lab is part of the uh, the broader environment with one of our other divisions, and they've been entering um, COVID-19 self-assessment forms since March 31st. And since that date, that group of people in that lab has completed 150 self-assessments, and we've had over uh, I think over 400 completed in our division since March 31st when we went live um, in I Track 365. And of that, one of the things that I think we've been most helpful or thankful for is the the mobile app so right now we're sitting with in 2020 in the drilling and production services division we've seen um, roughly 57 percent of all process flows have been entered using the mobile app um, which is incredible people were were always asking for an easier way to do things and when we provided them with that that solution that that um, itrack 365 <laughs> provided us um, they were able to say wow that's it. And we said, yep, that's it. And it's been great. So that's kind of where we sit from a volume perspective. I know some of the other divisions within Secure, just based on their size, see a lot more um, uh, in terms of proactive entries completed. And then, of course, we'd always like to see more. Uh, I'm not overly happy with just 14,000. I'd love to cross the 20,000 perspective. I've got, you know, balloons and streamers hidden in the ceilings until we get that that date going. So I can't wait to push the button and, and release them all. Stephen, you can say Neo Systems, it's OK. It will still a good <laughs> cause. So uh, I can see you struggling with that, but that's uh, that's not a not a problem at all. Talk about a little bit about the journey with, uh, you know, COVID. Like you guys have needed to do some things in, in the COVID environment. Can you speak a little bit to, um, you know, even some of the work that you did with Darren and uh, maybe give us a sense of uh, how that interaction went and and how we built on one of those themes, I guess, that we believe as as uh, the iTrack team is really important is, is community, is, um, you know, connecting and, you know, sharing uh, across the groups. Yeah. Um, so I paramount to everything was worker safety. And we wanted to make sure that everybody understood that that everything we were trying to do with um, with the iTrack COVID assessment form at Secure was to make sure that we're keeping the pandemic in front of mind and that it's important to manage and, and monitor your own health and also the health for not only for yourself, but for everybody else as well. And unfortunately, we have people that can't work from home. We have certain field operations. We have um, locations where you can't do, um, you know, chemical enhanced oil recovery ex experiments in your home. Like these, just, these things cannot happen. So they have to be at the offices um, and locations that we have. So we wanted to make sure everybody was safe and following the protocols, as well as utilizing this information for contact tracing if, if needed. Um, on top of that, as many of you probably have, your your clients and your the people that you work for are requiring this stuff too. So prior to going onto their sites, they want to make sure that your their workers are the people that are coming are safe and are healthy and whatnot. So um, the utilizing the tool, we we set out to say, hey, we've got a tool that we're using. We can do a self assessment form. All of these, all of our clients, especially on the drilling and production services side, we were receiving through any number of our registries, be it Aveda, ComplyWorks, ISNet World, they were sending us, here's our self-assessment form that you're gonna have to fill out. So we thought, you know, let's 
maybe take one step forward and see if we could create our own self-assessment form based off of the Alberta Health Services questionnaire. And we noticed that between five or six of them from our clients, they were all essentially the same. So we said like, hey, let's, let's create something that we can use and that we can create PDFs right out of the app um, so that it's easy for everybody. And that was the key point is that it had to be easy. The process flows had to work very easily and well, and it couldn't be complicated because we're all working remotely. Um, it was a challenge to try to work through things. And it was, it was a testament to how well uh, Darren's team worked. I, I'll specifically mention Diane Fritz, who we've been working with, um, with Secure for quite a while. And she was excellent in terms of being able to help us a, navigate how to use Microsoft Teams effectively, because that was all new for us as of, I think, March, when we all left the office. And, uh, and to be able to go back and forth to make sure that this worked very well uh, in a very timely manner. I can't remember the exact day that we started it, but it went live on March 31st in our organization and it's being used quite well now. So uh, it was really important for us to say, hey, it's not only for us, this is for everybody. And I do honestly believe that much like you see in professional sports, and some of them like uh, the NFL, people do say that it's a copycat league. Um, I really don't have a problem with sharing any of our information and how we gather it uh, through um, through use of forms and whatnot. Obviously, we don't want to share too much personal information and confidential information, but uh, if anything can help us at Secure, I'm sure it can help other clients. And that was why we said to the Neo Systems, <laughs> um, you go ahead and use this uh, for other clients potentially. And and the key for this process flow for us is that we're sharing, albeit you know, relatively minor personal health information. So we had to take advantage of confidential form types and confidential process flows to ensure that everybody uh, has access to that and everybody's pri privacy is 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 maintained so that was the concern that I think that, that we wanted to show and I think right now it's going really well um, you've had good feedback so awesome awesome Stephen so so when you uh, you think about this 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 COVID environment you think about uh, what you've been able to accomplish it, it sounds like uh, you guys have been able to react fast. You've been able to get things in people's hands really quickly. Um, and, you know, we're tapping into some of those best practices. So, you know, thanks for sharing some of that. Now, one last comment. What do you think about iTrack 365 running inside of Microsoft Teams? What does that mean to you? Does that sound um, cool? <laughs> it does sound cool. Um, <laughs> it's going to take a while for me to continue to get used to it. I'm still getting used to I track 365. My division just went went live with it in November. So I'm still navigating my way through. So right now I'm just personally saying, oh God, please don't, please don't add another thing for hey. me to get familiar with. So we, um, I think it'll be great. I mean, our, our division has has moved seamlessly to use Teams. So I'm quite happy with how that's worked. Um, so I can't see it being a problem. I just, I want to figure that out and how we could integrate it a bit easier. So. <laughs> Hey, well, thanks so much, Stephen, for for joining us today. Thanks for your efforts in terms of the, you know, the COVID response suite and the community edition helping with that. And, uh, you know, thanks for your ongoing support over the, the course of the last 10 years, um, because you've been a big part of uh, iTrack success and, uh, and one of the people that helps us just take it further and further. So uh, thanks so much. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, Darren. And thanks to all the Neo Systems people. Hey, awesome. Thank you. Um, so, you know, you can hear in Stephen's story, you can hear about, you know, iTrack 365 being what we call sometimes the first line of defense um, for things like, you know, COVID. We think that organizations, and, I, and let me say that a little bit differently. Let me say that corporations, we believe, have a very big role as a first line of defense for things like reporting um, healthcare, health um, issues around COVID. And that's what the iTrack 365 COVID response suite and the community edition are about, is, is making those available and then sharing them. I'm gonna just uh, take a brief pause. We've had a special guest join us um, that uh, uh, was gonna join us a little earlier in the call. We had a couple technical issues, but we got them worked out behind the scenes, thanks to our moderators and such. Um, but, you know, one of the things that's important uh, about our business is the relationships and the business relationships that we build uh, of the under, you know, kind of the core underpinning technology. And that core under
pinning technology is obviously Microsoft. That's no surprise to um, any of you. But our relationship and maybe the depth and breadth of our relationship is something that we've taken very seriously um, over the last uh, three, four years, even since uh, when I came in to run the business five years ago. And one of the things I did was I, I, I looked really quickly into the Microsoft ecosystem because I wasn't that connected with the system and all the people and who were the players and who were the supporters and who could help us grow our business. And I decided to participate in a group called, uh, you know, the Extreme 365 um, Executive Exchange. And the Executive Exchange was a group of the top business partners from around the world um, that gathered in all sorts of crazy places, whether it was Dubrovnik or Amsterdam or Newport Beach or or Florida. We got together and we got in a room with 50 of us and we talked about how do we work together better? How do we work with Microsoft better? And that dialogue was a really rich place um, to spend time. Um, we spent two full days together every, uh, every six months. Um, and we had incredible support from Microsoft to, to help understand and listen and explain back and forth a two-way dialogue of how we were going to work as business partners. Because we really we don't work for Microsoft. We know that. But we know that our relationship with this platform, we bet on Microsoft. We bet big on them. And certainly our announcement about iTrack and Microsoft Teams and full integration there, that's, that's an example of that. And it's come from very many years of relationship. So in Canada, with Kerry and Thomas, I've got a local team here who, who've supported us and really connected us with everything that we do in terms of practical, tactical, um, how do we get plugged into the right programs. But one of the people that I wanted to introduce today was uh, Cecilia. Um, Cecilia has uh, been part of the executive exchange. I've got to know her in, 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 in our travels over the last couple of years. And I thought maybe Cecilia could just do a welcome from Microsoft, talk a little bit about the partner program and, and why partners are how we play as industry partners into, into what Microsoft is doing and, uh, and share a little bit from there. So Cecilia, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm glad we got through the technical stuff. That's cool. Um, really <laughs> today. Well, I misunderstood the time zone is my fault. So sorry. So, so okay. sorry. I was supposed to do an official welcome at the beginning. And uh, I, I obviously misread the time zone of the invite. Um, uh, but thank you so much. I've, it's been fantastic to see the journey that new systems and iTrack has taken over the years. And Trevor Wright, uh, we met a few years ago um, in one of his executive exchange experiences, and uh, I got to got to know them. But I also know them by the numbers because they're being so successful. This company has been so successful and really on the leading edge of our proposition uh, with our platform to partners and to customers um, and how to offer opportunities for customers to get exactly what they want through, you know, through partners um, and solutions like iTrack 365. So yeah, it's just like Trevor said, um, I've been in Microsoft for almost 20 years, um, 14 of those years in business applications. The unique thing about Microsoft and Microsoft in the business applications um, industry is that we're so partner driven, we're so partner centric. And what that means is that we don't claim or think that we can address ourselves, every scenario, every conversation, every industry, every vertical, um, and our partners can do it much better than us. And it is a core part of our job to build the right platform, to build the right um, technology models, but also programs to allow partners to do what they do best, specialize on an area that we would never get as deep on and, and deliver what customers, exactly what customers need. We're known for that. Uh, when you talk to, you know, other players and other competitors in the industry around business applications, they'll tell you that one of our strengths is our ecosystem because we build with partners in mind in the center. Um, and what we've done with partners that build solutions like iTrack uh, that we call ISVs or solution providers, um, we've created a whole new motion, not only from a program perspective, but also technology-wise, uh, making our platform um, so much more robust and integrated. Because, I mean, 
when you buy any solution that may be built on Power Apps or built on Dynamics 365, you're really buying into the Microsoft Cloud. So part of delivering that promise has to be that uh, companies like iTrack can, can integrate with everything we have to offer. And they end up, if they do a good job, like iTrack does, they end up being the best representation of what the Microsoft Cloud has to offer. Because it's not just about Dynamics or Power Apps, but it's also Power BI, and in this case, Teams, just like they showed. I mean, our, our newest proposition uh, from a Power App standpoint and, our, and for ISVs is to connect solutions that may traditionally be more connected to our Dynamics 365 products now with uh, Teams. Because, you know, Office and Teams is permeating, especially now in the times that we're living, every information worker, every employee in the planet. And if through Teams they can access the applications that they need, that's fantastic. Again, you know, we, we the Microsoft Cloud has for all the way from the data centers to everything that we do with the data, reasoning and gathering insights to the business applications platform to some first party applications and the fostering of of all these partners that what they do is that they, they take everything we have to offer and they transform it into a very specific solution to a very specific problem. So super excited and very um, optimistic about the future together with uh, with iTrack. They've been a best practice already this fiscal year for us. Um, Certainly, Canada has been the best practice in itself uh, in working with partners like iTrack, but iTrack itself uh, has been um, in the leading edge of the new program that we launched for these types of partners, and they're doing it again with their integration with Teams. And we can't be more excited about partnering together and what the future holds for us together. So. Hopefully you have a great next hour or two in this customer conference. And I look forward to hearing about it, Trevor. Hey, awesome. Well, uh, thanks so much, Cecilia, for joining us. Uh, uh, we really appreciate it. The support uh, from yourself, from the, the broader Microsoft team, you know, and, and Natasha, Diego, some of our local. Um, I talk about Thomas and Carrie. Um, the work that we've done in the executive exchange. There's so many people that I can call out that have uh, that really allowed us yeah. to take those tools and dig deeper. And, and that allows us to solve the problems, which we wake up every day, which is solving problems about safety. Mm -hmm. And uh, so thank you for joining us today. And uh, um, yeah, we look forward to lots of good things to come in the, in the future too. Yeah, Thanks. let me yeah. see how it ended up going, the experience, and have a great rest of the conference. Hey, thank you so much. Thank Take you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay. Well, that um, great to great to see uh, great to see Cecilia. So um, let's come back to our, our customer roundtable. And uh, I think uh, Tom, am I turned on on all occasions here? Yeah, I think I got everything showing properly. Um, you know, and and have a few more conversations. Um, so I'd like to next go to uh, uh, Aaron Lapointe. Um, Aaron has been working with uh, you know iTrack since 2017. Aaron, are you here on the call? Um, I think I see him there. Um, I am here. Okay, thanks, Aaron. Uh, awesome. So Aaron, you you told me some really interesting things when we were talking and preparing for this. And and Alberta Newsprint, um, as you said, is you know one of the only newsprint companies in in in, in Alberta. Um, they, you've got a very unique and adaptable business model, so you can tell us a little bit about how that works. Um, you've been working with our tool for, for you know, uh, a number of years since 2017, but you said something interesting to me when you talked. You said you have 250 people in the company, or I think that's around the right number, but you said, I got 250 safety people. I don't have one safety person. What did you mean by that? And maybe tell us a little bit about, you know, introduce your organization. Tell us what you meant by when you told me that. Oh, sure. Kind of shoot from the hip on this. I don't have anything written down, but uh, really what that means to us is that um, everybody is responsible for their own safety. And that meaning 
everything safety encompassing. Um, take care of yourself first. Take care of your coworkers. Um, we don't like to have that one person that um, you know plays cop or or you know has to get after people. We expect people to, to get after themselves to hold themselves accountable. Um, this business is a, it is a manufacturing business with uh, you know we're a pulp and paper mill. So lots of uh, dangerous equipment, dangerous situations. Um, people just need to be aware 24 seven here. And uh, in doing that, they have uh, achieved some great heights when it comes to safety. Tell me then how, um, when you started with iTrack, it, it, it started a little slow. We, we uh, you know, in terms of your implementation and, and you know, we had to work through some things together as, as kind of teammates, but, but then you saw it improve. How did it improve and what were some of the steps that you took? And then what did you build in it? Like what kind of things do people use day to day in, 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 in iTrack that you think might be relevant to the audience today? Okay. Um, of course, in most organizations, change is, um, it's a struggle sometimes, right? You have a, a whole uh, different culture of people. There's there's a multiple age groups and whatnot. So you struggle a little bit with change. And in doing so, when we brought uh, iTrack on board here, uh, we were going from a paper-based uh, safety system and trying to, you know, essentially digitize it. And we needed to keep things as like and as simple as uh, we could. And so the struggle early on was having the iTrack environment almost mirror what we have on paper. Um, it, we overcame it. We had some amazing help. Like uh, you guys have uh, some crazy smart uh, technical people in the background. Um, slow, steady, we got it together. And what we have developed from this is our our safety system is entirely online now. Um, and as well, we have uh, one thing in particular that I'm kind of proud of is we call it the Hazard ID program. And it allows users to use iTrack to identify hazards, which in turn uh, sends out a notification to the entire um, mill site and all of our employees warning of the hazard and telling us what we have immediately done to mitigate the issue. Um, uh, part of oh &S in Alberta here requires that uh, you do let your employees know of the hazards and this is a great tool for being able to do that. Um, I can just say a little bit thing, a little bit on the uh, Incident and investigations. Incident investigations um, have become very simple, where in the past they would be slow and drag out for months on end. With the the digital tool here in iTrack that we put together, it, it has really streamlined our process and you know made us come to uh, root cause conclusions a lot quicker. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. You said, um, you know, and, and I've heard this from other people before, um, you know, one of the goals, um, you know, that we have with with iTrack is that people enter a form or a process flow or, you know, a bits of information from the field and the mobile app fast, faster than they can enter it on paper. Would you say we've achieved some of those goals in your organization or is it is it that easy to use and that fast to operate? Yep, the ease and the accessibility. Um, we also do audits with iTrack here, and I'm able to carry a device around while I'm doing my safety audit and check off my information in the moment and add comments. Um, handy tool when you're in an environment like this because um, having that mobile app um, gives me that option of doing that out on the floor. I can't carry a computer around with me or I don't want to. Uh, but my uh, my phone or an iPad or something uh, works like a charm. So definitely um, has provided a better ease of use and entering information. Awesome. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for sharing, Aaron. It's been uh, it's been uh, again a, a journey and, and a fun journey as we've got to know you guys and your team and uh, how it could really help. 
you know, for the audience here, if you look at Alberta newsprint, um, one thing that I will call out, they're a very humble group, but they are, you know, constantly getting a stream of awards for their safety programs and being uh, recognized in their industry as a leader. So uh, we're uh, really proud to be a small part of that and helping you with the technology side. But, uh, you know, kudos to you guys and your team in terms of what you've been able to implement in your business. I just wanted to give you some props to uh, your organization. Uh, I, one of the milestones that I wanted to just briefly tell you guys about was uh, this year we have uh, finally reached a milestone that we never did in 30 years of business. And uh, we went a year straight without a medical incident. Um, we're actually now on day 418. And we're pretty proud of that. And we believe iTrack has definitely been a tool that has helped us get to that point. Aaron, that's what it's all about. Thank you. Uh, thanks for sharing that. That's, uh, that's really cool. That's really cool. So um, let's talk um, with another use case that might kind of sh surprise people on how um, Scouts Canada uses uh, um, uses iTrack. Um, we've been working with Scouts for a number of years. Uh, you know, Patrick and his team, and Andrew, the CEO, um, you know, saw a uh, a real need. At, you know, as a youth serving organization, that safety is a critical underpinning of the business, and it has been for many years. And so, we as a team at iTrack really jumped at the opportunity when they expressed an interest to say, "How can we help? And how can we support it?" So, um, you know, Patrick, you want to talk a little bit about how you guys use iTrack, your audience of, of you know, volunteers and, and uh, you know, and youth and, uh, you know, where, where, where you see it uh, adding value to your business. Yeah, hi. Yeah, th thanks for uh, having me on, first of all, Trevor. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I guess our, our journey with iTrack started back in 2016. And as you said, you and the CEO, Andrew, we were discussing about how Scouts Canada could really uh, take advantage uh, of using a safety app like this. I mean, uh, you know, it's no secret. I mean, we're a youth serving organization and, you know, kids are obviously our, our, our main, one of our main audiences. So, you know, if there's ever a reason that we need, uh, we need to ensure people are safe, it, it, it's for that reason. So, uh, yeah, essentially we, uh, We've taken it, uh, iTrack, and we've actually been able to brand it with, with of course, your uh, iTrack 365s, not Neo Systems, Neo Systems, Neo Systems Assistance. But, uh, it, and we've created our own app. I mean, uh, we, we have it in the Play Store and, and the iOS Store uh, for, for all of our members to download. I mean, similar to what you were discussing with Aaron about, you know, he doesn't have uh, two safety people is 250. I mean, we we have 20,000 adult volunteers who are able to go and download our safety app and, and report on incidents. And you know, we have 60,000 to 70,000 members. Excuse me. And you know, it, it, they could all go and uh, fill this app. So it's really putting that uh, culture of safety back into everyone's uh, uh, all of our users' hands. Our, our, from scouts, from 14 year olds and 17 year olds to our volunteers, to their families, anybody could go in and, and access this app uh, completely free and, and report incidents to us. You know, and uh, you know, Patrick, I think you raised something uh, that probably many people on the call don't even realize um, that we can do with iTrack is, is that idea of a branded app. Um, so we, we took iTrack, all the process and function that you know, but with you know literally a hundred thousand people that is part of your audience, whether it's youth and 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 volunteer leaders, they're not going to know iTrack. They're not going to go to go to know download that. But when they go for Scouts and search Scouts and safety, um, they still get the breadth and 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 strength of the tool that iTrack is. But it's not about our brand there. It's about your brand. It's about you guys being able to reach those people and then integrate that into your process. So uh, so that's something we've been doing that for a couple of years. Many of you on the call may not even know, and it may not be appropriate for certain various business audiences, but uh, in some audiences, it, it does make a real difference in terms of how you reach out. So Patrick, maybe the last question about how do you see iTrack going forward? Like you've got a lot of youth, you've got a lot of leaders, you've got, you know, um, some people might not realize the breadth of Scouts Canada in terms of the number of properties that you, you have a, a significant set of assets. 
um, located all across this country. How do you see iTrack playing into some of those, uh, you know, challenges that you guys have as a business? Um, some of us maybe think of as scouts as being, hey, there's, you know, a bunch of leaders meet in a church basement. You guys are a big organization. You have, you know, hundreds of properties all over the country. How does iTrack play into that? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I, I think you n nailed it on the head there is uh, our, our next phase of it is really looking at uh, onboarding our properties. I mean, we have over, you know, 400 properties that we're responsible for across the country and, you know, any number of uh, individuals who go to those camps during that year. So we, we, we need to make sure those are safe. I mean, I, I don't have to tell uh, an audience full of health and safety professionals <laughs> the, the exposure that 400 properties and you know, of maintaining those and to ensure that they're safe for people to visit. So uh, it, it's going to be absolutely vital for us to ensure that, you know, they're our, our, our safety is uh, our safety of our properties is, is up to standard and that uh, we're compliant in those and ensuring that uh, you know we're, we're leveraging kind of the eye track system so that we could track that and you know if there's remediations that we need to take we can take remediations and and corrective actions on things and you know currently you know you know Trevor and you know Darren and Shilpa and Melika uh, you know big shout out to them they're help and Tom obviously they're helping us uh, go from on-prem to cloud and and kind of uh, look looking at the, uh, the the team's integration for sure I mean as an organization that that's been <laughs> forced to like everybody else to go to go to online I mean we've taken advantage of the Microsoft Teams and uh, it, we're looking forward to some uh, integration on that end too but overall I mean it, it's really going to be about it's really going to help us build that culture of safety I mean it's not just about uh, you know the physical health and safety of an individual but you know how can we make sure the rest of our organization is safe as well properties yeah. included yeah awesome well thanks uh Thanks, Patrick, to you, and thanks to uh, Andrew and the team at Scouts Canada in terms of, uh, you know, the work that we're doing. This move to the cloud, which is going live real shortly here, is is something that uh, um, is real exciting, and uh, we look forward to how we can support and work together, um, you know, here in uh, in future phases. So uh, thanks again for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hey, right on. Awesome. And. Um, so I'd like to now switch gears to uh, another um, kind of safety function with with Shannon. Um, Shannon Argent and, and the the team from B VBP, I'll let her introduce herself, um, is doing some really interesting things with with iTrack. Um, you heard us talk about procedures and augmented reality um, earlier. And, you know, those kind of use cases maybe seem really far fetched a year ago, but there's some really challenging things happening where you know, when you go to do an audit in today's world, you may not be able to visit um, in person anymore. So, um, Shannon, are you there? I'm here. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Can you Why hear me? Inter introduce yourself and talk a little bit about the e-auditing process and and how you're using it to manage, you know, corrective actions and and what that looks like in in your organization uh, with iTrack. For sure. Um, I. My name is Shannon Argent. Um, I'm the business manager for Verified Beef Production Plus. So we manage both training and verification services for the beef industry in Canada. <clears throat> and um, um, well, where we went in, ran into a roadblock is, you know, we we had auditors who potentially had, you know, vulnerable people in their household. We had provinces where um, they had, you know, different regulations. And so we wanted to develop a, a remote audit process and which, on, to be honest, we're looking at not just piloting right now for COVID, but going forward to reduce our costs to collect data. And um, iTracks and Neosystems was a very, very very good partner to do that. Now you you used um, you've done some of this work as custom development, like where you hire programmers and they start building uh, it, and, and uh -huh. you've gone down that path. And you know, so this was a difference in in the sense that you're buying a full system that obviously can be configured, but you're not writing custom code. You're building on the community <laughs> and processes that exist from other people, and certainly the Microsoft platform underneath it. Can it, you tell us a little bit the difference between those two in terms of what your experience has been? 
Absolutely, and that's a very, very good question because um, we um, we did develop some custom software for what we needed for our audit process, um, but we found that it was very cumbersome to change. Um, and so when we engaged with Neosystems at iTrax, it was to develop some offshoots that could potentially interact with our custom software, but we're not going to spend, the, you know, our, um, spend our money to develop more of our custom software. We're going to do these offshoots because we know that they're going to be flexible um, for what we need. So mm -hmm. that's, that's what we're looking at. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's, it's definitely, you know, we, we in, in the software industry often talk about custom. We talk about mm -hmm. configuration and, and we, we, we really try and distinguish that because, you know, we don't write custom code. We, we write, you know, we configure our platform, but uh, certainly you're highlighting that with some of the experience because, you know, it can get expensive and, you know, reinventing HSE, reinventing auditing, I don't think is not what needs to happen in today's world because exactly. we know what the process is. We just need technology that supports it well. And what we really, we oh, actually oh. really, really appreciate iTrax experience in auditing um, to help us do our, our offshoots that can interact with our already existing software because that's what we do. So I, I would just want to say that we really appreciate that. Awesome. Awesome. And you guys are starting, uh, the Teams announcement wasn't new to you guys. You're starting to think about that a little bit. Are you excited about what we're doing in Teams? Oh yeah, we we love teams actually, and we're kind of getting our whole our whole organization onto teams. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a good fit. Well, thanks yeah. Shannon for joining us. Uh, you know, thanks. We're we're excited about what you guys are doing in the space around auditing, and uh, you know, again, look forward to to doing uh, doing more things and and being really creative. You guys have been leading the charge in the cattle industry. We've seen some of the press that you guys are generating with how you're doing audits differently and, and really doing what, you know, in our industry is called digital transformation and everybody rolls their eyes when they hear that, but you guys are really living it. So, uh, you know, congrats on that. And uh, we look forward to doing more. Thanks, Trevor. We're hoping we're leading the charge in the whole agriculture space, not just cattle industry, um, but we're, we're leading with the cattle industry. So thanks for that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So Martin, um, Martin, are you here? I see him on the on the list of attendees. Um, so one of the companies that we were super excited to start working with in in, in 2019 um, it was a company you probably heard some noise about um, because these guys are redefining a space. And uh, I'm a techie. I admit I'm a techie. When I got to go tour their place, I was smiling ear to ear for the whole time. They build robots for um, you know, a manu robots for essentially picking product. I'll let Martin Hill explain it much better than I, but they are very serious about innovation. They're serious about you know using technology, um, obviously in their core business, and they chose iTrack to help out. So Martin, why don't you tell us a little bit about your company? So cool what you guys do. I'd love to hear a little bit of a narrative and then uh, we can talk about how that fits with iTrack and, and going paperless. Sure, thanks uh, Trevor, thanks for having me on. <clears throat> uh, so, like you mentioned briefly, uh, uh, Adabotics, uh, we, we focus on design, manufacture, and installing automated uh, storage and retrieval systems to store, access, and move warehouse goods uh, with robotics. So, um, that being said, we have a very uh, big diverse team from engineers software developers uh guys working in the shop doing manufacturing um and support staff as well uh, as well as field service engineers who support our our uh, clients um so uh, early last year about same time we started looking for a solution um uh, because we're expanding so quick, uh, exponentially, in terms of the number of employees we hire, in terms of the locations we we have, uh, in terms of customer sites we have to support, and it quickly dawned on us that uh, we can't continue to have our uh, health and safety systems um, on paper and uh, Excel spreadsheets. 
uh, like we used to do when we had 30 people and all of a sudden we're 100 within uh, six or nine months and then 200 within another year. Um, so we needed a solution that could tie into some of our existing platform uh, and we, the Microsoft suite, which is primarily what we use. Uh, so we, we uh, came across iTrack recommended to us by one of our employees who, who've worked with um, uh, Trevor or had some relations with Trevor before. So we explored that um, option and uh, yeah, we, we've we implemented iTrack. Um, we're still in that phase of implementation. We haven't rolled out the entire thing yet, but it, it's working well so far for us. So. One of the things, Martin, um, I saw when we toured your organization was the emphasis on data, uh, the emphasis on, you know, Power BI and looking at data. So when you think about, you know, you know, getting safety data and getting it real time, maybe you can comment a little bit about how you see that might fit in terms of, you know, you doing the role that you have in your business and, you know, being able to tap into what's going on in the organization using the mobile app and the real time reporting from, from tools like Power BI. Sure. So uh, data, like you mentioned, is very important for us, especially being there's a, there's a, lot, a lot of techie guys and technical guys and what they like to see is data, right? They, they want to see the visuals, they want to see the numbers, and there's no better way to explain it to them um, rather than having those uh, data and figures and uh, together. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I think when, when we were looking for a solution, we wanted something that will house all of our documentation. Uh, we can input data. Uh, our guys in the States, because we do have location in the States, should be able to feed that system. And we can have that data in real time. They can have access to all the documentation they need, the forms they need to fill out. We can track everything that way. So uh, data is very important for us. If you visit our office, like Trevor mentioned, you could you'd see that's our uh, 52 and 72 inch TV mm -hmm. screens yeah. on every single wall. Uh, just feeding um, uh, that's a field feeding information to the guys in. Uh, we have kind of a little control room, uh, if you can call it that, um, where they see real time what's happening in this field, how um, our systems are performing, how they can support. Uh, the clients better perform. So uh, for us, HSE, that meant uh, we have to give the, the the workers a similar tool. Uh, and they're happy so far. They prefer a system where they can go on their mobile phone and quickly enter data. And it, it just works that way for us as a company and, uh, and our organization supporting uh, uh, the f fulfillment industry. Uh, supply chain industry. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Martin, for, uh, yeah. for for sharing some of your experiences. For, uh, mm -hmm. you know, everybody on the call today, watch this company. Atabotics is, uh, you know, kind of redefining their space. We're super excited to be to be partnered with you guys as you guys continue and, and we grow with you guys. Um, mm -hmm. It's an exciting journey. So congrats on what you guys are doing. Let's see some of that. Uh, we'll see those Power BI charts get filled up with all sorts of things so we can have our own 72-inch monitor at uh, one of your yeah. offices with uh, all the safety and quality and statistics like that, and uh, yeah. away we go. So uh, thanks again, Martin. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think that the, the integrating iTrack with Teams would really work well for us <laughs> as well because um, uh, we're excited. We want to really see that happen uh, because – for example, our field guys, that's their bread and butter. They use Teams a lot, like 70% uh, of the time to uh, share information and data. So um, offering them that platform where they don't have to switch from one uh, program to another uh, will be great to see. So we're looking forward to that. And thanks yeah. for having me on again. Hey, awesome. Thanks again, yeah. Mark. Yeah. Totally appreciate it. Right. Cool. Okay, well, um, so let's now switch. So we're on the home stretch here. Thanks for people who've uh, joined us. Hopefully this, uh, uh, you know, you've got lots of value and, and seen some of the things in, in the recording. Obviously you can go deep, deeper dive on many of our sessions. So I'm just gonna close us out here. 
really quick. And I'm going to talk through um, the calendar, um, the conference schedule, so that you guys can get a good sense of all the things that are happening over this over the next two days. Don't feel like you got to take this all in at once. Um, you know, there's a lot of content. There's literally years of, of my team's efforts, and I am so proud of them in terms of what they put together. When I put out the challenge and, and uh, you know, talked about the number of sessions, I got a few looks of, what are you doing, Trev? And then, you know, before I knew it, they were all drafted in behind, building sessions, showcasing, and uh, they've got some amazing things for you guys to show or to see. So obviously we've just done. We're just concluding. I'll have one more wrap-up slide, I think, and uh, and then we're we're going to conclude the the opening session this morning. Um, this afternoon we've got uh, technical enhancements. This is Melek. He's going to show you some of the details of the work that uh, Ryan and Jeff and Tian and Melek have been working really in detail to make happen to to do all the the heavy lifting behind iTrack. Um, Darren talked a bit about the COVID suite and uh, not only COVID, what we can load into your system right now for your organization, but also talk a little bit about what we're doing with the community edition and what that uh, is involving. And, you know, one thing I want to say is if you guys know, you know, a small business that needs help and has a health and safety professional that doesn't have a system, that might be something that, that, that they could use the uh, community edition, which is obviously a different version of iTrack in a different way, but it, it could provide them some value. And we'd certainly invite you, uh, if you see that in the community, to involve us in that discussion. Then certainly, um, you know, our Microsoft Teams, the explosion in that tool, but the explosion of interest in how people work differently, um, how they scale their organizations with it, but how Microsoft or, and iTrack work really um, tightly together. Then I'm gonna run a session um, for some of the partners. We've had interest from, it's crazy, like 25 different countries from, uh, you know, we, we co-sell and market this product together with Microsoft and system integrators and ISVs. And we'll be talking with some of those partners um, just as I had talked about with Cecilia that we work with around the world when it comes to implementing in, you know, Africa or, you know, into, uh, you know, Australia and some of the places that uh, our tool is being explored. Uh, this data transfer tool is pretty exciting. Um, you know, uh, the teams work really hard. At, you know, Jeff and, and, and team are going to go into that and show you how to move forms and process flows from one environment to the other. We had an older tool to do that. It wasn't cutting the mustard. We we wrapped it up, threw it in the garbage and said, we're going to do it over again. What they've done is is phenomenal. Michelle's going to have an expert exchange, really a round table, which is around HSC best practices. We're launching a LinkedIn group where people can have ongoing community conversations, whether you're using our tool or not. We're here for the community. Join us regardless. You don't have to be feel like you have to be a customer or something like that. Um, we want to help uh, people up their game in health and safety. And uh, if, if that's just through best practices and discussion, that's totally cool with us. Um, what's new with Dynamics? Obviously, the Dynamics environment is an underpinning. Uh, we talk a lot about Power Platform. Those words may be new to some of the HSC people in the, in the on this call, but is not new to the Microsoft people. And in that environment, is a very key underpinning. So every time a new piece of code comes from Microsoft in Dynamics and Power Platform, we get another set of tools that we can put bring to bear on health and safety. And that's been our strategy from day one. Then reporting, this is a must-see session. Reporting is so cool. We've done so much neat stuff there. Um, you know, absolutely fantastic. Um, work with Power BI, Cossum, and, and team are, are gonna show you through some things there. And then we've got uh, Tom gonna take us through the support options. We've really worked hard. We know we haven't been the best in previous years around you know, getting material out, having really clear um, um, a service level agreement. So Tom, with his customer success orientation and his work that, uh, you know, helping, uh, you know, his previous cloud company really scale and really get that right has been a, a big addition to our team. And he'll talk about that and different options. Um, day two um, starts with procedures and competency. Um, Diane, very passionate about this space. Um, there's incredible depth there. We've released more on our roadmap this year in, in the areas of procedures and competency. So come see that. If you've never seen it before, come um, and you'll see you'll see what the core is, but you'll also see new additions. Tom, if you want to just get together with some of the community, join us tomorrow morning and at, at both the beginning of tomorrow and the end of tomorrow 
for virtual coffee and virtual drinks. And then um, uh, our great friends at Secure Energy, um, you saw some, you saw, uh, you know, Kevin and Carter talk last year. Kevin's back to talk about what they've taken further with iTrack. I was just talking with, uh, you know, their leadership team yesterday um, about what they were doing and what they want to do next with iTrack. And we're really excited to, you know, to continue the conversation. So Kevin can show you a lot of the good stuff there. We talked a little bit about AI Builder. AI Builder is, is, is technology from Microsoft that we're again applying into safety. So you got... Uh, you know, you've got that, you know, that folder that causes guilt of all those hazard IDs or all those documents that are sitting in that box in the corner of your office. You haven't dealt with them. You know, let's talk about bringing those online and using some of this technology to automate it. Uh, Ryan and the team will talk about uh, the new training app. Um, this is a really big deal in terms of our mobile um, platform and how we're advancing. Um, get certificates and, and uh, you know, managing training profiles online. Um, Power Automate, how do you automate um, workflows? We've always talked to you guys about workflows. That's been a big part of our solution. Um, then you get into um, MDS. We've worked closely with the group from Chemscape, our partner, um, in terms of how to work with chemical data sheets, um, safety data sheets, those kind of things. So we'll get into that. Then we've got, you can see, it's, there's a lot. I gotta take a breath here. There's so many great things. Um, then we've got some of the e-auditing um, conversations that Michelle's gonna happen. And then I, I really invite you, I'm super excited. We actually invited them before the pandemic to fly to Calgary to um, from New Zealand. One of the customers who's really dived, they just, just dove into our technology. They've been using us, I think, for five years now. Um, where is, is a company called EnviroWaste or rebranded as EnviroNZ. It's a company really around environment environmental waste management and think of it as garbage trucks but you look at their business and you look at what they do online it's stunning they're going to drive join us live at 2 30 our time it's 8 30 on friday morning for them so uh really excited for that and then we've got our you know one of our favorite sessions with jeff and and, uh, and she'll put talking about hidden treasures in in itrack we're going to have darren and melek and the team talk about hey what are some blue sky things and then Join us for sure for the closing. I know even if you can't join all the sessions in between, come back for the closing. We've got uh, a few surprises for you. Um, we're going to call out a few people. So uh, uh, on some some really great work that they've done, not only on my team, but the extension um, within uh, our uh, uh, customer set. So and then we'll have a little bit of fun with the mixology session. So let me close and get everybody back to lunchtime. Um, I think we're right on time here, 11.54, and just highlight the last couple of things in, 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 you know, in, in 30 seconds here to close you out. So we first talked about how we look at the industry and why we think that there's a rally cry and that it's happening now as HSE professionals that we've got an opportunity to lead in different ways in our organizations. And we want to give technology and capability to you to do exactly that. You saw about how iTrack 365 is flexible, it's scalable, it's community, all those, those, those words, but those words mean a lot to us in terms of our roadmap and how we invest in the technology. You heard uh, Microsoft Teams, I think you've heard lots of times, We're, that's a big deal for us. We, we've actually been preparing and building a lot of the core infrastructure for iTrack and getting it better and getting better and getting it better for, for opportunities like we've got with Microsoft Teams. So the team has accomplished a lot in a short amount of time but it's really the culmination of, of many, many years of work. And we're excited to get people implementing it right away, finding out where uh, it can, how you would use it, and then start to evolve because I'm sure we'll version it with new uh, capabilities as we go. Then you saw robotic process automation. Who thought you'd be talking to us about, you know, RPA, but who, not, well, maybe that, but who those paper forms were really not part of the, uh, the narrative with us. Um, because we've always said, look, we collect that on our mobile data or on our mobile platform. Now you've actually got a way that you can, we can help you take that paper and bring that in so that you can get all your information in one place. And then you heard a lot about what we're doing to support um, organizations in, the, in, the, in this current crisis. Uh, we're very, very committed to that um, as a company right from from the you know senior management in AppDirect, uh, which I report into with Bert and Nick. 
Um, they have seen some of the work that we've done here as, as one of the business units of the larger AppDirect family, and they're super, super excited. So um, we're going to continue to you know build on that and extend that further. Um, so watch for more. And then you heard about uh, a very passionate you know uh, group of customers. Uh, you heard about a rally cry. You heard about what leadership we can provide. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're super excited you joined us on the journey. So from my team to you, um, thank you. This is a few pictures of our team and uh, and uh, they probably look a little bit more tired than right now, but they're starting to get jazzed up for their sessions right away, too. So uh, join them in their sessions. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have questions, post them in any chat. We'll try and find them and uh, we welcome your feedback. And uh, I think at this point we'll close. So thanks again for joining us and uh, have a great day. Enjoy the sessions and uh, I look forward to talking to more of you soon.